preview. I got it on tape and it was recording. Oh, there it is, over the left. Wow. That's a UFO up there. The speed was extraordinary. Oof. It looks like a flying saucer. I made it my job to get it on tape. Something was out there. Something overpowered the satellite. Franklin, uh, we see a long line, a couple of star-like things, and a lot of things swimming in the foreground. Can you describe what you're seeing? If it is a hoax, it was done very well. It just disappeared, vanished. It's gone, it's gone. I don't know. Probably moved at 100 miles in a matter of a second or two. The velocity is impossible. What I saw in that footage blew my mind. Every attempt to get to the bottom of this has been stonewalled. There's more to this world than you see. I think there's every reason to fear these things. During the last few years, an increasing number of UFO cases have been reported by people all over the world. And video cameras are now capturing hundreds of these baffling, unidentified flying objects, which puzzle both those who believe and those who don't. On this program, we will present the most compelling videotaped evidence of extraordinary and unknown craft ever shown anywhere. And hear from a top government physicist a video analyst, and the eyewitnesses themselves. Could these be actual oh alien God. spacecraft? Sophisticated military vehicles hidden from the public? Or incredible hoaxes? You decide for yourself as we examine the best UFO cases ever caught on tape. The startling domed flying machine you are seeing was videotaped over America on May 24th, 2003. It appears to be a mysterious device displaying some unknown propulsion system. Where'd it go? The crystal clear footage was shot by videographer Jeff Willis while standing outside his home in Phoenix, Arizona. Right when I hit record, at that second, the object was passing straight over the top of my house. And what I got on tape was a disc-shaped object turned on its side with the dome this way, the, ob the bottom part this way as it flies over my house. It suddenly does a U-turn and then jumped about a mile and a half in like a matter of a half a second to where I couldn't even see it anymore. So I started scanning the skies for it. Finally, about a minute and a half later, I caught it again and this time when I zoomed into the object it was a lot further away but it, it seems that it was still on its side people need to know and realize that this is a structured domed metallic machine that is running under its own type of propulsion system it's running under something that we can only dream about some top UFO experts believe this is the kind of compelling evidence that should get the U.S. government's attention. If I had to single out some single footage that I would bring in for, for congressional hearings, it would probably be Jeff Willis's uh, tape of the Flying Dome craft. It has been uh, analyzed enough by very high-tech equipment to say there's something there. It is metallic and it's, and it's definitely anti-gravity type craft. Is it ours? I don't know. Willis, a dedicated videographer, has taped several inexplicable UFOs over Phoenix, a city that many experts claim has the most UFO activity of any American city. But it's Willis's focused efforts to document strange disc-shaped craft and eerie nighttime formations that has produced some of the strongest UFO evidence on record. December 11, 2004. 
In the clear blue skies above Phoenix, Willis manages to tape this disc hovering for several minutes before a strange second object streaks past it from above. Whoa. Watch closely as the second object seems to do a free fall dangerously close to the larger stationary disc. Then on May 24, 2005, the two-year anniversary of his astounding domed saucer sighting, Willis captured this enigmatic craft navigating over his house. It too appears to be a metallic device displaying unknown flight characteristics. Moving silently to the right, the UFO now appears to be two objects or has split into separate parts somehow linked together. Just a few months later, Willis videotaped this daylight disc which incredibly turns into an orange glowing orb before vanishing behind a building. But the nighttime UFO encounters Willis managed to record during this same period are perhaps even more difficult to explain and were witnessed by a fellow Skywatcher. On May 12, 2005, we set up the camera equipment. So then all of a sudden I thought to myself, turn your camera on and hit the record button. For some reason, I did it. I zoomed out a little bit. Right when I zoomed out, four lights appeared in a triangular formation in the distance. Whoa, I'm getting a series of lights right there. I got it, I got it. I got two it. lights on the it's right moving. of the object disappear and reappear in front of the remaining two. Got it, Pat? Yeah, yeah. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Yeah, yeah, right in that cloud, that one way. Yeah. And then the, those lights go out. About a half a second later, it reappears. There it is, over to the left. Wow, jump away. Watch it, Pat, and that's in broad, that's right in the light. Although the military base nearby denied it, the video shows it's possible that they were aware of this extraordinary UFO sighting, and perhaps others like it. Sure enough, not two minutes after that UFO disappears, you see an F-15 circle the area. Well, here comes the F-15 to check it out. We were getting reports of this same phenomenon. Uh, that's the whole reason why we were up on that mountain. There was an object appearing lights that would jump in front of each other. The very next week, Willis and another Skywatcher went to the home of a local resident who had reportedly seen different yet equally baffling orbs repeatedly flying over his house and nearby mountain range. These dramatic events that unfolded in front of Willis's and the other witnesses' cameras have never been shown publicly. These objects appear first three orbs for about three minutes, and then the two orbs on the right disappear mysteriously. And there's one object left. About a minute later, three more objects magically appear on the left of the original orb that's left. Three of them appear at the same time above it in a triangular formation with the one light off to the side. At this point, we're all going crazy. We can't believe what we're videotaping. What we're seeing is amazing. Oh, yeah. shit, dude. Did you see that? Yeah. Yep, it's coming. Holy oh. shit. Oh. Oh. This is nice. It came back. Dude, it did wow. come back. More appeared, bro. And the original light that started disappears, and now we have a triangle formation of lights. The lead triangle light disappears. There's two lights left. All of a sudden, two more lights appear above it in the same distance as the original two are. So now we have four lights again, and the two on the left disappear, and now we have two lights. And then those two lights slowly disappear, and this whole sequence lasted about six minutes. It's some of the most amazing footage that I ever got on video, nighttime footage, and we got it on three different cameras. This controversial UFO video shot six years ago has rarely been seen by the public. It too is one of the most spectacular UFO videos ever recorded. Experts who have analyzed it are intrigued. As incredible as it sounds, it looks like a Hollywood type spaceship caught on tape. It's a UFO up there. Oh, it is, it is. I got it. I got it on film here. I'm zoomed into it. It was shot by a young man who was attending an outdoor arts festival in the Nevada desert. In his only national TV interview about the close encounter, the cameraman, who goes by the name Eric, recounts his UFO sighting and how it felt to videotape it. I reached for my camera and I zoomed in and uh, got a close-up of it that uh, the, the naked eye could not make out. Because to the naked eye, it looked like just a speck of red light way up there. 
in the sky. When you zoom in, you see this incredible array of, of lights that are going around a rim. Uh, I think the footage speaks for itself. We just sat there just so in awe of what it was, not knowing anything. It looks like a flying saucer, you know, but you, know, you try, you try and, and your mind's going, no, this can't be. Eric claims that shortly after beginning to videotape the UFO, his batteries ran out. When he returned with the camera fully charged, the mysterious object had vanished. It must have left pretty quickly because it caught it sitting there motionless. As you'll see, it does not move and the camera's lock is sitting steadily on the ground. So that's what makes it so interesting to me. But could this merely be someone's intricately designed device made to wow the Nevada festival participants? If it was created, no one has publicly come forward to take credit for it. I don't see any indications that this was added after the event. Whatever this light phenomena is, it seems to be at that location. The most significant detraction to this being a UFO is the fact that it appeared during a festival that celebrates light sculpture. So my guess would be this is some kind of floating device with lots of Christmas lights that's being suspended in the air somehow. Possibly a balloon. But it seems to genuinely be there in the sky. This uh, video clearly shows an object out there, saw some sort of a, some sort of, of a device, man-made or not man-made, but an artificial device with lights that appear to be going around, flashing on and off in a uh, very strange manner. Uh, one could uh, argue that it's uh, a real UFO. Yet Eric himself seems to suggest both on the tape and in his interview. The object he videotaped could have a very earthly explanation. Damn, it looks good. It's a really good effect, whatever that is. It's a really good effect. Being that we're uh, out there with a lot of creative individuals, that, that somebody somehow managed to suspend the most brilliant light sculpture up in the heavens. That's a, that's a pretty beautiful object, whatever it is. October 1994. This stirring video of what appears to be a gigantic UFO hovering next to the now tragically destroyed World Trade Center in Manhattan was shot by a group of Italian tourists aboard a cruise ship. Is it possible the video actually shows a huge flying saucer over New York City? If this image is real, it's amazing. What strikes me as being unconvincing about this videotape shot in lower Manhattan is the, uh, the camera operator, even though he's got a huge UFO appearing by the Twin Towers, actually moves the camera away and down. And on the audio portion of the tape, no one is reacting to what should be a terrifying phenomenon. And here you have a video of a huge, what would be a huge object, if it's a real object out there at the distance of the Twin Trade Centers. So you would expect that the people who got that video would have done something with it. They would have told the UFO groups. Instead, this, this video just sort of remained underground, um, has been rediscovered right here on this show. Though the World Trade Center UFO video remains an unsettling mystery, many people are actually using their video cameras to capture extraordinary objects that cannot be explained conventionally. Some people are proudly calling themselves UFO video hunters. Chris Miller is one of them. I guess it started with my grandfather. Um, he died in 1980 and left me all of his material and um, on Eric von Daniken. And um, Eric von Daniken's whole idea was that we were visited once before. And um, it was my idea that I want to try to get, go out and try to get proof for this. It started basically in five years ago in Michigan, while we were living in Michigan, and I caught one object on video and I brought it to the airport and no one knew what it was there, and that's how the ball started rolling. On May 2nd, 1998, I, we were outside. My son and I were outside um, playing in the dirt, and um, I look up, and I saw, and it was kind of cloudy that day, and um, I saw something sitting up in the clouds. So I ran real quick. My camcorder was ready to go. I came back, and I zoomed right up to it. For about 15 minutes, I had this on video, but for the first five minutes, um, all of a sudden, it disappeared. Um, it went from one part of the sky um, at least 30 mile, 20, 30 miles in a split second. I zip the camera over and I catch it again. And um, 
It was just absolutely fantastic because the object is huge. It's over, definitely over 100 feet in diameter. I set the zoom on infinity, basically, and zoomed into the maximum, and um, it looks, I mean, it's hard to t say what it looks like, but it looks like a flying saucer. Miller was able to capture this amazing daylight UFO cluster and two orbs on video as well. When I was taping the cluster, uh, my heart was racing. Uh, uh, you can even hear me breathing hard. After I realized what I captured on tape, it felt great. For the past three years, I've been told so many things, I'm not really sure what to believe anymore. Naval Intelligence um, studied my footage for four months, and their only comment was they have no idea what the objects are. I have no idea what I'm catching on video. If these objects are ours, military, um, secret projects, um, we're at least a thousand years beyond our present technology that they let us know about. I personally think it's a desensitization process that our public is going through by seeing these things. Try to have your camcorder handy and ready at all times so when you do see something, you'll catch something amazing on video, and then we all can come together and go to Congress with this, and then they, the public hearings could start, and um, the Americans could learn the truth once and for all. And Miller is not alone in his desire to capture UFO evidence for public scrutiny. Tom Saborin, another UFO hunter, began videotaping UFOs after seeing extraordinary footage taken over Gulf Breeze, Florida in the early 1990s. It's breathtaking. When I first seen the videos of, in Gulf Breeze, it, it made me go out and get a camera. I, I started going out every night and uh, every day. I made it my job to get it on tape. It looked like a big cigarette and it was flying across the sky. It looked like four balls that was connected the third ball to the end was red. The last ball white, 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 red. I think it either could be extraterrestrial or some type of new animal. I'm just a hunter. We don't want to hear about it. We want to see it. The Gulf Breeze UFO sightings that so inspired Saborin and others to point their cameras skyward have never been explained and remain some of the best UFO incidents ever recorded. Gulf Breeze, Florida, 1987. A man living in this seaside town located near sensitive military installations delivered these startling photos to the town newspaper. Soon after, this extraordinary videotape of the same structured craft was made public. Navy optical physicist Dr. Bruce McAvee went to Gulf Breeze to investigate. But it wasn't until I spent a considerable amount of time analyzing it that I realized just how impressive it was. The shape, the structure, and the way it moved is not a characteristic of any craft that human beings make. Gulf Breeze, 1993. These UFOs were caught on tape by another local resident. Look at this footage of an accelerating UFO. In slow motion, the object did not appear to be a missile or any known projectile, nor does this strange object. Here it is again in a third clip. In slow motion, the camera records a small silver streak of instant acceleration. We don't have this type of capability for propulsion technology in existence in, in human science. Redfish Point, Florida, 1993. This extraordinary cylinder-shaped UFO was recorded just outside Gulf Breeze by UFO investigator Michael Hawkins. It hovers over the beach not too far from Eglin Air Force Base. It was scaring me, actually. You know, I'd never seen nothing like that before with any kind of structure on it. I thought maybe it might be a military craft, but after a while, I, I started to think that, you know, possibly it was some kind of alien probe. Midway City, Florida, 1993. Amazingly, Hawkins managed to shoot footage of another strange object near Gulf Breeze that was also videotaped by two other photographers. These astonishing videos, taken from different angles, reveal an amazing Christmas tree-shaped craft hovering over a dense forest. At times, the object appears to give off dense smoke. Then suddenly, it shines an intense beam directly at the camera. From all the tapes I've collected, I do believe that there is alien activity over Gulf Breeze. And that's exactly what Hawkins thinks he captured on tape in this never-before-seen video shot near Gulf Breeze two years later, but never released until now. This craft has stunning similarities to what was seen in local newspapers and on tape at the very start of the Gulf Breeze UFO wave. 
Oh man, there it is. I got it now. After spotting the illuminated craft near Redfish Point with a few other investigators, Hawkins drives his car as far as he can before being blocked by trees. I can't drive, man, and get, get to zoom in here at the same time. Get out, man, get out. Braving mosquitoes and thorny vines to get closer, Hawkins does everything he can to keep the portal encircled UFO in frame. His running description is breathtaking. I got it now. Whoa. That's it, man. That's it. That's it. Man, did you see a blink off? Oh, killer, man. We got it, man. That thing's for real. It's fine. It's crap. There it is. Come on, focus. Focus, focus. Check that out. Check that out. It's right over the bay. Hope we can see reference points in this video. I'm telling you. We can see reference points. I see trees. They have reference points. This thing takes off. There's no kind of video. Check that out. Check that out. That is killer. This thing is real. It can't be no balloon. It's no balloon, man. It's no balloon. That is real. That's a real thing, dude. That is the real thing. Where the hell did it go? It's gone, man. It's gone. Hawkins was able to videotape the bizarre craft extremely close up and had it perfectly in frame just as it seems to vanish in the blink of an eye. But whatever all these perplexing UFOs videotaped for years over America represent, there's no doubt that mysterious craft are also being recorded around the globe, and even hundreds of miles above it. These video sequences might prove once and for all that NASA knows UFOs are navigating just above the Earth and dangerously close to our space shuttle missions. Franklin, uh, we see a long line. When I saw the tape, I realized that I was looking at very exciting, incredible footage that has never before been seen by the public. David Sarita, a former Defense Department subcontractor, has been studying NASA's possible interest in UFOs for over 15 years, and he believes this incident, which has since become legendary on the Internet as the Tether Incident, may prove UFOs are real. February 25, 1996, 100 miles above Africa, an experimental satellite system attached to a 12-mile-long electricity conducting tether suddenly breaks. Within moments, the satellite drifts almost 100 miles away. Nitrogen gas gathers around the tether, effectively turning it into a gigantic fluorescent light in space. Incredibly, it seems to attract some strange company. You see a swarm of what may be UFOs flying around it. And then we see the camera zoom in on these objects, and we see giant disks passing behind this tether. But the astronauts involved with the mission seem to have a more mundane explanation. There's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us. But is it simply debris, as is often claimed by NASA when looking at alleged UFOs in space? Watch what happens when the camera zooms in. What we're seeing on the screen here appears very small, but if you blew this up, you would see that these objects are enormous in size. This UFO here, I measured approximately two to three miles in diameter against the 12 mile length of the tether. If it's further behind the tether than I think, it could be much larger. The potential size of these UFOs is clearly mind boggling. And according to Sarita, so is the advanced technology behind it. Would a piece of space junk pulsate in a regular pattern as we see here? This spiral, to me, suggests a gravity wave that is stronger than light. This, to me, is proof in quantum physics that these UFOs are utilizing very advanced forms of gravity energy and zero-point energy. Sarita believes that our space program does not yet possess this technology, nor the capability to perform the startling maneuvers displayed by these UFOs caught on tape during another shuttle mission. If you look over here, you're going to see something that a meteorite cannot do. You're going to see a high-speed angular turn, 
and the object continues. The g-forces on a turn like this would flatten any astronaut into a pancake. Could all these objects be disregarded as mere space debris, as NASA contends? If that's so, then how can they explain this eye-opening footage of UFOs forming in an organized pattern? As these UFOs reach their positions in the circle, they light up, showing incredible intelligence. There we see a UFO light up right in the middle of the circle. This shows intelligence. Whatever the UFOs videotaped by NASA cameras are, there's no doubt that back down on Earth, they continue to be filmed over every major country around the globe. February 3rd, 1995. During the early morning hours, a woman tapes this mysterious craft hovering above Beijing, China. Notice how the glowing object floats, making no sharp turns or sudden maneuvers. While some dismiss the craft as a blimp, airline pilot and UFO researcher Jim Courant is not so sure. I'm quite aware of what a blimp looks like, and these advertising blimps are in many areas around the world. And I have checked with the blimp company that supplies many of the uh, advertising blimps. We also did a, a check with the, the control tower, the radar, military, and civilian over there, and there were no registered aircraft in the area at that time, blimp or otherwise. So I'm not quite sure what it is. The UFO. May 29, 1993, Stuttgart, Germany. Halfway around the world, then 15-year-old Kai Metzger recorded a craft remarkably similar to the one seen over Beijing, China. I saw this thing and uh, I thought, oh my God, what's that? And because of that, I, I took my camera and, and shoot it and I was really afraid of it. What are we to make of these unusual looking craft videotaped in the skies above China and Germany? Are they blimps or something much more inexplicable? Dr. Bruce McAbee believes he has the answer. We have studied a number of videos with this sort of an image and in some cases have been able to absolutely prove that this is an image of a blimp which has lights on the inside, a transparent skin. This shape right here matches very closely or perhaps exactly with the known shapes of internally lighted blimps. Derby, England, March 13, 1995. This unidentified flying object was caught on tape for nearly an hour. The strangely shaped object was described as being completely silent. A few years later, in August 1998, a large metallic object was caught on tape again in England, this time in the village of Silbury Hill, an area famous for UFO sightings. The noiseless craft was said to hover in the sky for two to three minutes before disappearing, and then it returned, then blinked out. During a five-month-long wave of UFO sightings in Peru in February 1999, two photographers captured the same imposing object on the very same evening just outside Lima. The next night, this mysterious craft was caught on tape again for a full 40 minutes as it hovered above the nearby town of Pueblo Libre. Look at this red glow on the object's underside. Later, three distinct white lights appear on top. Jim Courant finds the images baffling. You have something that was so strange that uh, anybody seeing it uh, would have to say, I can't explain it. Ecuador, 1995. A high school student named Victor Chiluisa managed to capture what many experts consider one of the most extraordinary UFOs ever caught on tape. In this fascinating footage, a structured, rotating craft can clearly be seen in the nighttime sky. According to Chiluisa, the craft hovered very briefly. I was with two cousins, one friend. Suddenly, we saw some red lights in the sky. Five minutes later, maybe, I went out with the camera again. And this object was like a star, like a six-point star. And uh, I began filming it. 500 people in the city of Guayaquil reportedly witnessed this stunning close encounter. The craft, which resembles a glowing chandelier, did not appear to be any craft that Chiluisa and the others with him were familiar with. It couldn't be a helicopter, it couldn't be an airplane, it couldn't be, well, whatever. It just could be an UFO. 
It was, for me, unbelievable. I was so astonished that I couldn't say anything. Quito, Ecuador, one year later. A round object was spotted in the night sky. Again, the craft exhibited an elaborate array of lights. No known man-made object or aircraft looks like this. December 3rd, 1994, Monterey, Mexico. What you are seeing is perhaps the most compelling nighttime UFO video ever caught on tape in that region. A respected UFO researcher, Santiago Itoria, shot the tape. From the mountain emerged this huge, red glowing, very bright object. So I began filming, and we realized that it was indeed a UFO, a triangular shape, red glowing UFO, very silent, and it was very low altitude. Look here as Zitoria zooms in with his camera, focusing on its mysterious red glow. We took two days reviewing the video, making analysis on the computer, and we discovered that uh, this UFO has this kind of energy all around. Can there be any simple explanations for the strange objects continuously being recorded around the globe and even above it? Most UFO investigators remain perplexed. Interestingly, some don't see it as a threat, but as a blessing. We don't know what they are, where do they come from, what do they want, but we are convinced that this presence is positive to our lives. Undoubtedly, such reverence concerning UFOs in Mexico can be traced to perhaps the most spectacular UFO event ever caught on tape in that country, or arguably the entire world. It happened on July 11, 1991, when hundreds of people aimed their cameras skyward during a solar eclipse. This startling video was taken during the eclipse by Guillermo Aragin, a network TV executive. It documents an eerie metallic craft with a saucer shape that was also videotaped by other videographers in Mexico City and other places throughout the country almost simultaneously. This unprecedented mass UFO sighting during the eclipse ushered in a Mexico UFO wave that continued throughout the 1990s, as UFO watchers kept their cameras trained to the sky. Amazingly, many Mexican people are starting to believe that not only are unidentified flying objects navigating in the skies above them, but aliens are actually landing and meeting with their countrymen. December 8, 1999, as a Mexico City businessman gets dressed for work in the early morning, he spotted this unusual craft outside his window and managed to capture it on tape. Listen as he speaks to the possible inhabitants of the unknown craft. ¿Sabes qué? Llámale para algún alguna cosa de los medios de comunicación. He realized that it could be some of the so-called UFOs, and it was the classic shape of the oval UFO, most of the times present in the skies of Mexico. He was very excited, and he said, how are you, boys? How are uh, you staying? What can you tell me about Alpha Centauri? And suddenly the, the object disappeared. Maybe they didn't like the comments. Notice the dark upper and bottom edges of the craft and the spinning movement in the middle, which seems to disturb the atmosphere around it. Whatever was floating in the Mexico City sky that morning remains a mystery. But there are some UFO cases in Mexico which, simply put, are either too good to be true or elaborate hoaxes. Incredibly, some of these even involve meetings with alleged alien beings. November 1991, Tepetzlan, Mexico. A man named Carlos Diaz managed to capture a UFO over his house. Look here as he zooms in on this strange orange object in the sky. Then, suddenly, he's somehow right on top of it, as we see sharp detail rarely seen in nighttime UFO videos. It was like a plasma, classic plasma shape with red color, red glowing color, and with these spinning movements that uh, uh, show that it was indeed a UFO and not another known object. While Carlos Diaz's first videos may be impressive to some experts, many still feel that Diaz, a professional photographer, should have stopped there. 
Since his first videotape sighting, Diaz has managed to record many other UFOs. But some of them are simply too far-fetched and simply look hoaxed. Look at this video taken in June of 1992. Notice how the UFO suddenly appears out of nowhere, almost as if it is turned on like a light bulb. Another video taken in May of 1993 shows the craft close up. Suddenly, some strange laser beam seemingly shoots out from the bottom. But are we seeing an actual UFO or merely a part of an elaborate hoax perpetrated by Diaz? Dr. Bruce Maccabee has viewed much of the Diaz material. This video uh, was shot through a window in his house. And that means that there's the possibility that he could have hung something in front of the camera, you know, just outside his house quite easily. But do we disregard all of Diaz's video evidence simply because some of it may not look credible? Now, I can't say that every one of these things is not an actual unidentified flying object out there. I would tend to believe that some of them may be fabricated. To add even more controversy, Diaz is claiming actual alien contact. He alleges that beings from another world invite him aboard their spaceships and give him messages for mankind. Carlos Diaz he told me that uh, he was uh, absorbed by the plasma craft in some way. So when the, he met the occupants, he said that they were beings of light, kind of a spiritual extraterrestrials. September 1994, in the small village of Metapec in central Mexico, a woman went public with a video showing a supposed alien being in a field next to her home. She didn't shoot it just once. She allegedly shot it twice. The alleged alien in the field videotaped in Metapec has made news headlines in several countries. But is it real? Take a look at the image. It appears to be a glowing creature of some kind. The body seems somewhat squatty. The head possibly a typical alien seen in many magazines and newspapers, as well as books. What are we to make of it? Many experts are baffled. To this day, it remains a mystery. While UFOs have been videotaped in record numbers around the world and even above it, nowhere have there been more sightings of mysterious craft than over Israel. The inexplicably eerie UFOs caught on tape over the Holy Land are some of the most extraordinary images ever recorded. Some UFO experts even think it's possible that they are proof that extraterrestrials are keenly interested in Israel's security. September 1996. This peculiar and fascinating image was filmed by a resident of an area called Kefar Saba. When the craft first appeared, it resembled an apple with a strange top and bottom. This incredible UFO was seen again in a different configuration the next evening. After it appeared a third night, the videographer marveled at its intricate design. Look here at the many forms it seems to take. One night, there are three lights on top. The second night, only one. The third night, the light takes on the shape of a crown, and the entire object shrinks in size and turns a deep shade of orange. UFO researcher Michael Lindemann has never come across anything quite like this. Seeing the video of this thing, I must say it's, uh, it's very impressive, and uh, I can't imagine what it is. It doesn't look like any prosaic object that I can think of. It doesn't bear any reasonable resemblance to a conventional aircraft of any kind. We showed the intriguing video to Dr. Bruce Maccabee. He offers a possible explanation for what we are seeing. The question is, is this image shape actually the shape of the object, or has it been modified by the camera? If it's on automatic focus, it likely tries to focus at a wrong distance. When that happens, you get an image in which the shape of the image is related to the aperture of the camera rather than the actual shape of the object. But how is it possible that the same individual, using the same camera, captured three separate images on three separate nights? If so, what are we really looking at? Maccabee reminds us it could be an optical illusion. This thing right here suggests to me that the actual shape of the object has not got round things like that on it. It was a very bright light, which may well be a UFO, but the shape of the object is probably not this shape. 
but this amazing flying, structured craft has no earthly explanation. It was seen over the small farming village of Kibbutz Hatzor for three consecutive nights in August 1996. The video, shot by a teenage boy living at the kibbutz, shows a bizarre looking, partially lit craft with strange red markings and rectangular shapes. When the camera zooms in, we see what appears to be a light on the craft's left side take on amazing structure. A structure some say resembles a huge flying building with hallways. The young videographer and witnesses around him were completely stunned by the strange machine in the nighttime sky. As the camera continued to roll, the craft hovered above for hours. After it was caught again on tape, the next night, word of the strange craft had spread, and some 60 members of the kibbutz came out to see it in all its glorious color. Though the same videographer's camera inexplicably lost power on the third night, he managed to film the odd craft using a neighbor's camera. Look what he managed to capture on tape. The structure is so massive that the illuminated portion is said to represent only 5 to 7% of its actual size. Is this the design of some otherworldly architect? As incredible as it sounds, some UFO researchers claim it could be housing alien inhabitants, giant aliens as described in the Bible. No one has ever seen one like this before. So it was captured on two separate nights, one separate morning. Over 100 people uh, uh, saw it. Barry Chamish is one of the most respected UFO investigators in Israel today. He believes that this is one of the most extraordinary UFOs ever caught on tape. What we're dealing with with Chatzor is a very large UFO. This thing is not just a, um, a round disc. This thing's got windows. It's got two rows of windows or vents or who knows what on earth they're shaped because they are very odd, offbeat squares and they managed to get a close-up of these vents. I mean, really close. You're right inside them. And uh, they could be teeth for all you know. And you have no idea what's attacking you but this orange structure. I believe it's energy vents or something. Something to do with venting energy. The kibbutz is near an Israeli Air Force base, but Chamish is convinced this is no military craft. Everything is wrong. The dimensions are wrong. The squares aren't quite squares. If it was a military vehicle, it hasn't come back. It's never been, the likes of it have never been seen ever again. Then what was hovering above Israel for three consecutive nights that summer? Obviously, if this is up in the sky, there's nothing that's supposed to be up in the sky that looks quite like that. It apparently is some object which has got that sort of a size to it in this level of blow up. When they zoom in and get a structured image out of this, uh, it's just plain, it doesn't look like anything that I've ever seen. It doesn't look like uh, any ordinary UFO, that's for sure, but it certainly doesn't look like an airplane or a blimp, uh, balloons or whatever. But this would have to be considered to be unknown. These unexplainable UFOs videotaped over Israel have never been sighted anywhere else in the world. Some believe the Holy Land may hold special significance for visitors from other worlds. Even Israeli television has broadcast images of possible UFOs on the news. However, according to Chamish, the Israeli military has secretly viewed UFOs as a possible threat. Israel has never admitted uh, to UFOs, and I know for a, a fact that our Air Force is chasing them constantly. I was in the Air Force. We were ordered not to tell anyone. This extraordinary footage may actually show a UFO being tracked by an Israeli military jet. The video was shot by a student named Gil Barr. I got my camera and zoom in on the object. And uh, as I zoom in, the object uh, began to get closer or brighter. And I didn't understand what it was. But what happened next is even more baffling. Visually, it appears as though the objects are interacting. Notice how the two seem to be checking each other out, but who is following who? Is the plane a fighter jet attempting to achieve lock-on or awaiting further instructions from the ground? 
or is the orb engaging the jet in a little fun? Finally, the two seem to cross paths before the jet flies out of frame. It's an electronic cat and mouse game. You've got a high-flying surveillance plane throwing all this electronics on this uh, disc, and this disc kind of uh, bopping away from, uh, from the waves of the beams. I think it was just playing with this plane. But there was nothing playful about this dramatic UFO encounter, recorded on September 28, 1996, near the town of Rashain, not far from Tel Aviv. Could this be a UFO being shot down, or two rival UFOs engaged in battle? Chamish believes the craft involved are not of this world. We don't have things like that in anybody's Air Force. And secondly, there was no shrapnel. Uh, there's no sparks, uh, nothing physical exploded. Chamish thinks that the UFOs over Israel are definitely not military aircraft, but may in fact be aliens, and their appearance may be cause for alarm. Well, what are uh, they here for? I think there's every reason to fear these things. However, many UFO experts and videographers worldwide believe all governments are not doing enough to solve the UFO enigma. I don't think that UFOs come from such a high level of mystery that we're incapable of understanding them. I think that we have yet to launch the kind of investigation that the mystery deserves. Increasingly, self-described UFO hunters from all over the world are uniting through informal channels and the internet to share videos, as well as information. I'm in contact with about 12 people right now that are hardcore like me. But I know there got to be at least 50 of us. Maybe in the future it's going to pick up as a fad or something and there's going to be more and more. If 100,000 people had camcorders or a camera, um, that right there, Congress would definitely open their eyes to have a study. Even NASA's own cameras are capturing strange disc-shaped objects that seem to demonstrate technology that might be more advanced than our own. What's more astounding is that some experts actually think that these disks could be tied to our Earth's past and might also be memorialized in ancient artifacts. In 1938, high in the mountains of China, archaeologists discovered these round stones with a black dot in the middle and little notches out of the side. Now, if you notice in the UFO here, we have a black hole in the middle and a little notch in the side. The disks that were discovered in China also had a carved, spiraling wave that radiated from the center of the dot all the way to the outside of the periphery. It was a perfect match. I believe that these dropa stones were made as artifacts to record what the ancient peoples of China saw in the skies. The same thing that we're seeing on this tape. More evidence that UFOs could have wide-ranging implications to mankind can be found in the wave of sightings caught on tape in the Holy Land. Some Israeli UFO researchers even believe these strange craft could be tied to the scripture. It seems like every race of UFO and alien are rushing to Israel in the last 12 years. The Bible does describe what we call UFOs today. So what are we to make of the extraordinary UFO videos recorded in Israel, around the world, and even in outer space? Could we be getting closer to answering the questions these videos increasingly raise? Some people think it's only a matter of time, and that the ever-proliferating video camera might be the tool that finally makes the ultimate difference. Yes, I think that uh, cameras might be a tool to prove uh, those things. And because without cameras, um, you cannot shoot these things. And so uh, no one can see uh, your video. If you don't have it on tape, and then it's just another story out of 10 billion stories, we want to see it on tape. We don't want to hear about it. We want to see it. Our prospects are good that someday most of us may live to see the day when we understand what this really is. <laughs>